Hello, my lovely people, for all of you <laughs> for all of you in Australia, happy Christmas and New Zealand and Asia and India. It's already Christmas Day there, so I just want to get that out of the way. I thought I'd be all alone here today, but no. Thank you as well. I thought I'd be all alone. Wonderful team that's always here. All the regulars. Love you all. Happy holidays. Today, as usual, I promise I will not miss a beat during every day of this bull market. Time is too precious and there's just so much money to be had. Like I still am scratching my head here. Like literally Solana went up 24% in the last 24 hours. It's crazy. And that's after you know, an 888% year, and then it does that on top of everything else. It's like, mind-blowing. Anyway, Mike, <laughs> happy holidays. Bottle Red, uh, Justice for All, Team Metallica, Forrest M, TND Tesla, thank you all for coming. We're going to talk about the top questions from the Patreon community this week, and everybody's worried about the Bitcoin Cash ETF impact, what that means. We'll talk about hive mining. We'll look at, uh, somebody asked me to talk about all my uh, Solana and Solana pair trades over the last two weeks. I'll do that too because I'm asked to do it. Talk about Tesla competition and rebates going away. Seed security tips and how to hide your seed when you have roommates or people you live with that you don't trust. Super interesting. And a big shout out to the team behind me who helped prepare that section. Thank you, Mr. W. And also real world crypto use cases, what I believe are the top ones. Mastering margin, how I do that. And crypto staking best practices. All the stuff that is top of mind and everything that I could covered today everybody needs to listen to so thank you all let's go now this by the way is financial advice just a guy on the internet what do i know anyhow i and one more time before i forget merry christmas everybody uh whether you practice or not happy holidays whatever anyway i'll still be here if you need me if you're lonely over the christmas period come join the action on this channel and all the questions come from patreon thank you all first one is striving because i know you're busy with families and friends and everything else christmas eve last minute shopping I'll be quick, but we do have 55 nuggets to get through. So first of all, this is the big one. The conversation of the week. Everybody's freaking out. Everybody's spreading FUD. And da-da-da-da-da. This is from Big J. There has been some talk about the Bitcoin ETF being cash only. Am I correct thinking that the cash ETF would not have to purchase Bitcoin directly, thus having a lesser impact on the Bitcoin price, etc., etc.? Everybody is freaking out. First of all, the easy way to think about this before I go into the details. Do you walk into a, say, BlackRock gold spot ETF with a bar of gold and say, hey, please give me some shares of the ETF with this bar of gold? No, you don't. Okay, so that's the first thing. Get that out of the way. And what actually happens behind closed doors? I cannot determine the games between Wall Street and BlackRock and Fidelity and the SEC and money and all that type of stuff. I'm not sure, but this is the way I interpret the situation. And do not be alarmed. First of all, issuers, uh, three of them at least, have updated their ETF proposals with technical changes. I know, for example, BlackRock, that should be BR, not BT. Anyway, BlackRock and ARC updated their filings to allow cash redemptions. Okay, we'll talk a bit about that too. The function of a spot Bitcoin ETF involves the company acquiring Bitcoin and issuing shares representing the share of that stash of Bitcoin. Okay, let's get that perfectly clear, everybody. In addition, more shares can be issued as the Bitcoin stash expands. All right, and managed by the ETF owner managers. And Fidelity and BlackRock are also mining Bitcoin as part of this process. So they're building their own stash from self-mined Bitcoin too. And in addition, BlackRock owns a ton of Bitcoin miners as well, where they can get straight OTC deposits too, I'd imagine. It's probably one of the reasons they got on there in the first place. Also, customers can only buy and redeem shares using fiat cash, not Bitcoin. And this ensures that the ETF remains a security regulated by the SEC, allowing for taxation and control and be shut down if necessary. And remember, you can't deposit gold bars into a gold ETF. So I hope that's perfectly clear. There is also a mechanism behind the scenes that, that uh, I think BlackRock came to market first with. And that is not only will Coinbase do, be doing custody for the BlackRock spot ETF, but... I think NASDAQ will be verifying their stash as well. So everybody, don't freak out. Like, there's so many people that aren't on the train right now, and they're just trying to terrify you out of your bags. Everybody's saying, oh, it's going to be a 60% crash. It's going to be a seldom used event, etc. I've done nothing all year but share the hardness of this asset. 
We are going into diminishing supply against increasing demand. It's law of economics. Unless they don't apply this time around, the price will go up. So thank you, everybody else. And Bitcoin Maxi is chiming in too. You are amazing. Thank you. Uh, so let's jump into the next question. Everybody just, you know, relax. Take your time. Read the documentation. Understand what's happening. There's no way it would be just people get this cash thing in their heads and they think, oh, they're just going to buy futures or just cash or whatever and there will be no acquisition of Bitcoin. No. <laughs> no, they can't do that. Anyhow, let's go. Brad one. Do you think the Bitcoin spot ETF approval will draw retail or institutional investment away from the Bitcoin miners? Well, we just discovered that <laughs> the actual people with the spot ETFs need the miners more than ever. They will continue to invest. They want to be able to own these things and be able to buy OTC as the stuff is being mined. In addition, as I covered yes, no, yesterday or Friday in my mining update. By the way, that was my best mining video ever made. And it goes way beyond just Bitcoin miners. It goes into everything. But this we analyzed too. And this is from Equinometrics. And then basically they believe, hey, happy feet up there in Canada. On average, you can expect the miners to grow six times faster than Bitcoin while Bitcoin makes its way to 100K. So I've done the math on that as basically the Bitcoin price is a 2.2x. The miners should do a 6x or more, depending on the actual miner, some up to 15x, some up to a lot more. So that made me very bullish last week and made me take some action too. Next, in addition, people are also asking the same question, will this mean nobody will want MicroStrategy anymore? No, even, my, even Michael Saylor came out and said, um, spot ETFs, they say, we are different, we don't charge fees, we can do financial jujitsu, we can issue shares, we can borrow, we can lend, we can blah, 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 all this crazy stuff against their stash. So they're still a force to be reckoned with. And remember, they issue shares, buy Bitcoin, price of Bitcoin goes up, their stock goes up. Because the market cap goes up, because the price of Bitcoin goes up, more funds have to buy it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Please, everybody, let that penny drop. It's so important to know. Next question is from Kevin C1. This is one. Uh, can you please go over some entry points on recent IA buys now that they have already pumped? Is there still an opportunity for me? And Dragon, so again, I normally don't discuss trades or results unless I'm asked to do it, okay? I'm the last person to ever brag. I want to keep all the stuff we do in the community kind of a secret. But Kevin C., because it's Christmas, I'm going to answer this question for you. And uh, remember, the, we're just going to analyze the trades of the last two weeks and some of the new stuff I'm doing, which is an experiment. I'm using tools to swap between assets. But let's go and look at all the trades over the last two weeks or 10 days or something. And uh, it's been a fun time. But uh, past performance doesn't necessarily mean we'll continue in the future. But boy, has it been a great 2023. Absolutely mind-blowing. Anyway, first one, OSOL trade. Uh, December 12th, filled at $40.20, and then that thing went absolutely bonkers, all right? So this is an asset that was trading at 150 bucks last time the stock market was open on Friday, and that was before Solana went on a rampage. I do expect next time the stock market opens, which I think is on the 26th of December, whatever day that could be, that would be Tuesday, maybe. Um, I expect OSOL to open over 200 bucks. Now, what I did was I didn't place this trade in my own account. I tr placed it on trade with one of the team members here. And uh, we pulled out 150K within two or three days. It was insane. But I haven't checked in with what's going on there because I think I sold at 80 and then placed limit orders to buy back in the low 60s. I have no idea what happened with those. I don't know if they're filled or not. This thing is a little bit illiquid and we are moving around thousands and thousands of shares, but we'll see. I will promise to check in though and I'll make a post on Patreon to see if we did get fills and what the status is of that account because if we did, you know, buy at 40, sell at 80, buy back at 60, and now you're in a position that's going to be north of 200, that means that retirement account is going to be a million bucks right now which is insane to even think about anyhow that was the first one so that is um kind of nearly a 5x let's look at the chart this is the osol chart i actually put the layer out model in here too and you can see here level 10 is 219 bucks and le level 9 is 189 remember this is a proxy of, of solana and solana has gone vertical therefore i expect this thing to go more vertical 
after it going completely vertical over the last couple of weeks. It's insane. So for those who say you can't make, you know, a thousand percent or 500 percent on just straight equities. Yes, you can. Now, they're few and far between. But to make that type of returns in a short wind of time is life changing. Anyway, very happy for our team member to be able to do that. Um, and don't do this at home, kids. It's very risky stuff, too. Next, second trade was the December 13th Solana buy. I bought Solana at $66.61 to trade for solid ecosystem tokens on swap them on Jupiter AG, dot AG, which is the aggregator. And that position is up 75% since what, 11 days ago, approximately. But I, instead of selling my own Solana, I buy it and swap it. And that is kind of how I do it. I don't take my existing bag and swap it. I buy net new and swap it immediately. It's like buying fiat or taking US dollars, converting them to USDC, and then pair trading them as well. Let's look at the chart as well. Again, the Lilo model here for the upside. Uh, level 10 is 232. Uh, level 9, 201. Level 8, 151. 151 is kind of the next place where we could stop. And just checking in on the real-time Solana price now, it's about $115.50. Again, I hit 118 I think, yesterday or today. Let's check on that right now, actually. It went to 118.1, yes. Uh, but this thing will go crazy. And I've done tons of videos. In fact, I did a video yesterday on the Solana pump. I was watched 80,000 times in 18 hours. Insane what's going on. But the price target for this thing is way, way higher than this right now. Completely revised all my price predictions. Backed into them. And check out my posts on Twitter. I was very active yesterday about the Solana dominance. It smashed through an all-time high. It's now over 3%, which again is crazy. So that was the second trade. Third trade over the last week or so was Shadow, December 15th. And here, uh, the idea was to, well, the rate I, I swapped Shadow uh, Solana into Shadow is 0 0.0108. Let's see where it is right now. I did this also on Jupiter. And this is the only trade that is actually the exact same level that it was when I traded it. So this has gone nowhere for nine days, which is awfully disappointing. But at least you're not losing money, which is good. And uh, next is I swapped Bonk to Ray, uh, December 16th, again, post on Patreon. Uh, the internet doesn't lie. And that's a 263% gain. And people said, why? Well, I got bought bonk and it had tripled or more. I don't even remember. And then it looked really toppy. And then I decided, okay, let's try find something that hasn't pumped yet and swap it into that. And that was radium. And uh, as you can see here, it's up a 2.47 X. So basically for each ray, I swapped about 36,000 bonk. And now you can get 90,000 bonk for every ray. That's how the swap trading works. Really simple. And timing is important, of course, as well. Nosana, another one. Um, and this is part, I bought it at uh, $0.52, 52 cents, five days ago. And now it's up 44%, where, or sorry, 36%. Uh, depending on the time of day where you measure it, it's very volatile. If it was a few hours ago, it was 44%, but now it's just up 36% per this live chart. And again, not bad. And uh, what else do we have? Then I also swapped Pith into Radium. So I did two Radium trades. I felt that it was probably the most undervalued with the most upside, with the most active use case as a DEX right now. And uh, I swapped Radium pith into radium i got i think uh, for every ray it cost me 2.9 pith and that was three days ago and let's see where that is today and the pair chart is uh, up 69 percent uh the ray pith now there's about nearly five uh, five pith for every ray so if i swap back i've increased my pith bag size so that's kind of what i'm doing i'm experimenting with our models and these different Solana ecosystem assets. The ultimate vision is to create this magnificent portfolio where we can just pair trade it all day long. And let's check out the results from the last two weeks. Um, so the OSOL up nearly 400%. I do expect it to open above 200 bucks when the markets open again. Solana now 74.15%. Solana to shadow is flat. That's the only one that didn't work. The bonk to Ray is up. 147%. By the way, that's the ROI. It's a 2.47, 2.5x return. 
Uh, NOS is up 32.69%, and Pith to Ray up 66%. And I even calculated the ROI per day, which is kind of insane, and the baggers as well. Sometimes I like to think in terms of baggers. So the uh, the OSOL is a 5x, and the Bonk to Ray is a 2.5x. Again, just fun. So I hope that answers that question. And I'll be doing a lot more of this next year too. And this year. And even tonight. And tomorrow. Whenever the opportunity arises. And I see things that are too high. And I see things that are oversold. Swap them in. It's easy. Uh, in addition, next question is from Namor. Regarding Tesla Impact, government cutting credits and subventions for all EV around the world. Germany, do you see any impact? So let's... First of all, break it down on two different things. One, I did a detailed analysis of the new Highland Model 3 against a Toyota Camry, which is kind of a more expensive car. Um, but literally, uh, I'm going to go through this super quick because I did a whole video on this. But every Delta is just better. The Model 3 is far superior to a Toyota Camry. It has so much more technology. Uh, you name it, acoustic glass, computers, drives itself very quiet, stiffer body, uh, premium doors, you name it. It's got tons and tons of stuff. Like literally, you're getting three or four times the car for less money. So the, somebody put it uh, kind of aggressively on Twitter. They said, <laughs> their words, this is from Brian Krasenstein. He said, um, wow, the new Tesla Model 3 hadn't just been revealed and it looks quite amazing. Tesla is so far ahead of the competition in so many ways. And I didn't even, by the way, I'm comparing the car to the Camry. I don't talk about FSD and autopilot and stuff. But uh, Brian says, it's almost ignorant not to buy a new Tesla if you have thirty to $40,000 to spend on a new car. And that's not even taking into account the credits that some people can get, up to 7500 The other thing as well, what Tesla have decided to go into the website now in Germany, and they have committed to pay the delta for the loss of the government incentives, they will now give you the money back instead of the actual government. So a lot of people felt slighted by the government. Them pulling the actual government credit, now Tesla have committed to pay. So I'm not worried. The cars are so superior to everything else out there. I know all the Tesla haters will go mad when I say that. It's just a fact of life. Compare them. And then people say, like, you know, stuff like the Cybertruck is light years ahead. It's 10 years ahead of any other truck on the planet. 10 years before any other car maker could even think about catching up with that thing. They don't have any of the technology. They don't have the steel. They don't have the 48 volt architecture. They don't have steer by wire. They don't have any of that stuff. Anyway, Tesla are just, and that's the only thing, by the way, we had a great buying opportunity for Tesla this year, back in late 2022 early 2023. It was a gift. It was incredible. And Tesla's still up 100%. But it's still nowhere near where it should be. That thing hasn't popped yet. It's definitely a $400 to $500 stock in the next year or so. We just have to wait for it to pop and wait for the market to wake up. But, you know, that could take a while. Anyway, next question. Silicon Valley Stoic, how are you, buddy? This is an interesting one from Dark Zeratul. Living with friends, I can't securely store a hardware wallet's my hardware wallet seed my plan is to digitally hide the algorithm and encrypt the seed on a metal recovery plate making it impossible for anyone to access both your thoughts on this very good and again we have our wallet expert who chimed in on this and a big thank you as well first of all some cool stuff here that i never even thought of one is when you live with a roommate it can often be hard to keep things safe and hidden and your idea of encrypting the seed and putting it on a metal plate is a great idea this way even if your roommate finds it he won't be able to use it because it's encrypted and in addition to this it's probably a good idea to put the plate in a safe place and we came up with a few options for you okay so first of all a safer lockbox is good. They're fireproof, waterproof, and it's a secure way to store your seed. But they can be broken. So if, you know, one of the things about these things is um, if you can lift it up, you've got to make sure you've got to bolt it to a concrete floor for all possible. But if you can lift it up, you can take it to a locksmith and any place to say, can you open this? And they'll hit it with a sledgehammer and it'll open. Uh, that's just, so it's not completely foolproof. You've got to think of other ways. And we have other ways for that too. One is a safety deposit box at a bank. Renting a safety deposit box at a bank provides a highly secure environment for your seed phrase, and banks offer 
this incredible security and privacy, making it an excellent option for safeguarding your seed outside of your home. I don't know how much they cost in different parts of the world, but in the US they're quite reasonable. Uh, storage locker, I don't advise that, but some people do. You never know what could happen, but renting a small private storage locker can be 10 bucks a month. And it's a great option, but uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that, but it is an option as well. And uh, this is kind of a cool one behind a picture frame. Uh, for the budget conscious, concealing your seed phrase in an envelope taped behind a picture frame can be a discreet in-home option. And it's a simple yet effective hiding place that blends into your living space, making it less likely to be discovered by others. Some people put guns in these things or cash or secret mementos or what do they call them the the old bonds back in the day when they were on paper anyway just some ideas for you there lots of cool stuff you can do also final trick is you can get a false bottom drawer using a drawer with a false bottom or a secret compartment is another discreet option and these doors are easy to build and this method uh, provides a hidden yet accessible storage solution in your home and in fact sometimes in bedroom things uh, there's like a piece of felt you just peel it up and put stuff under it as well too so easy to do and uh, thank you for that great question uh, next question is from kevin a i have i'm 29 years old with a sizable bag of solana well <laughs> Kevin A, you just became very rich since you submitted this question. So congratulations. And I finished paying off a debt that leaves me a $1,200 free cash a month. Should I start a Tesla bag, increase the Sol bag, play Bitcoin proxy, Sol ecosystem, and flip that into Tesla? So not financial advice, but I'd say you definitely should get some Tesla, especially if you have a two plus year time frame and at your age, you've got all the time in the world. Get some of those shares now. This thing is going to go bonkers, mark my words, the next three, five, eight, ten years. Something's going to happen and this thing is going to go to the moon. Also, think about playing with Bitcoin miners. Play with equities. Uh, again, as I said before, all my money, most of it, has been made trading equities. All right? Not crypto. Um, so, think about that too. And also... The niche sold ecosystem plays, like I just walked everybody through, how I'm, I'm swapping between different assets. Lots of cool alpha there. You know, as I showed you, the returns you can make in like less than two weeks or 10 days are pretty insane. And it's it's not hard to do because you're, tra you're trading. So when you're trading against Wall Street hedge funds and stuff like that, it's very difficult. When you're trading against crypto investors, it's actually infinitely easier and that was part of my secret thesis i shouldn't say that out loud because i don't want to offend anybody but you know if you have the right tools it makes it very easy to prey on crypto traders you can you can watch them on youtube as well you can see how good they are anyhow moving along uh double question here from big money and woozy wooster could you do a should i buy jupe and what is so special about jupe will it be out in time to fully take advantage of this bull run and will it be available on major exchanges so uh, from what I hear, it's going to be released early January. I'll be on top of it. It's very difficult to do a should I buy at this stage because there's not a lot of information out there. But as soon as I get all the information, I definitely will do that. And uh, thank you, Solar BTC. Um, but one of the things about Jupiter is we don't know where it's going to go, how high it's going to go, how expensive it's going to be at launch. But I will analyze all that. And of course, if I make a move, uh, you will all be the first to hear about it. Patreon first, too, as well. Um, but it will not be widely available on exchanges until a good time after it's out there. But I do believe, obviously, as I mentioned, I forgot to show the slide. Um, it's not yet launched. Do not buy the fake Jupiter. Wait for the real thing to come out. Uh, the data on it is very scant right now, but I will be buying and uh, there is something, and I don't know how reliable this is. This is from Avo, but this is the price. Now, a couple of weeks ago, the prices were at 25 cents, 23 cents. Then it shot to 50 cents. Last time I saw a few hours ago, it was nearly 82 cents a token. So this thing, when it launches, it could be worth a dollar. And that makes it expensive from some of the information I know about how much is out there. Um, but we'll see. And of course, I'll compare it to its competition. I'll look at adoption, look at usage, all that type of stuff, and then see if it's worth it. So that should I buy will come, but when I have all the data. Thank you for the question. Next question is from Neptune and beyond. Recently heavily invested in Hive at an average of about $4.95 Canadian. 
370 US dollars. Since IA rank for this company stock dropped, do you speculate I cut my losses and invest in higher ranks such as CleanSpark or will Hive have a comeback of 20 Canadian, 15 US considering their heavy spend into AI? So one of the things that concerns me is I like companies to be very, very focused. And when you have miners pivoting into things like AI and compute, and they kind of do that, what I believe, when they're not able to cut it as a miner. So that that's not taken into account in my financial model. My financial model is all just numbers and data, and it compares everything to everything equally the same way. So let's look at where we are right now with Hive. <clears throat> and per my miner model, for my miner video on Friday, it, see it comes in as seventh, but it's not too far off. But looking at Hive, you can see very quickly, um, one of the things I don't like is the price to book ratio, uh, EBITDA margin, and the rest is actually pretty good. So it is not the worst, but they kind of have a lot of average scores, not too many outstanding scores. So that's kind of where they why they rank seven. And the miners are getting so competitive now. Even if you look at some of these percentages on the right, you'll see how tight they are, especially with the final average of all scores. I mean, sometimes there's just a thread between them. And also, the other important thing to remember is, as the price of miners change, all these ratios change. We had one miner called Argo on Friday, went up 35% in a day. If I had done the mining video on a Thursday, all the data would be different. So think about that. Let's look at uh, Clean Spark versus Hive again. Always compare things as a pair. This is year to date, and Clean Spark has far outperformed Hive by about 183%. So from that perspective, it's done better for the year. But will this continue? I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. Every asset has a price. And uh, I, I can't tell you what to do with Hive, but I can tell you I'm not in Hive. I'm in three other miners. Oh, by the way, somebody said in a comment in YouTube, oh, you're only invested in the, in the assets that are top of your ranking. <laughs> I sometimes I worry about the people out there in the world. I buy assets based on my ranking. I don't buy the ones that rank at the bottom. So I hope people understand that. And I share everything openly. And you can make your own decisions. I just thought that was a funny question. Anywho, moving on to sub 14. Um, what three projects in crypto do you think have the best real world application that are in development in their infancy or actively working? So... We are digging into this area, but the three areas that I'm very focused on are kind of stable coins, without being, of course, stable coins, but that is a real world use case that will drive a ton of adoption, when, especially when it comes to things like remittances, etc. Then there are uh, payments, and oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, uh, let me see if people have, yeah, hopefully, I'm not taking questions. I don't know if anybody here to accumulate the questions for me i just remembered uh, people are off on christmas eve so i'm on my own i think i said that at the beginning anyway next thing is payments like solana pay will be huge for payments and other payment mechanisms and dexes because uh, i come from the tradfi world i think dexes are a huge use case uh, we are trying to analyze what will be the winning players we've got a feeling for some of these stable coins doesn't really matter that kind of floats up to the mothership like a layer one but payments and uh, DEXs will be very important. Uh, but as as whenever I buy something, it means I am very, very strong uh, <laughs> confidence in where it'll go in the future. Uh, next is from Merkle Tree. I love that name. Uh, when, why do you use your margin to sell puts when opening your synthetic longs, which have limited profit potential, rather than using the margin to buy more coals, which have unlimited profit potential? Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is so first of all if you just buy coals they are outrageously expensive for the type of assets that i buy so you for example you could look at some of the miners the the miner would trade at five dollars and if you're looking like at a, a five dollar strike call option you spend three dollars on it so that your break even would mean you have to go above eight bucks to make any money that makes no sense okay you just buy it on margin. You put 250 down, you buy it for five bucks. And that's the way you make money that way. 
Now, with my synthetic longs, when I sell a put and the price of the asset rises, the price of the put goes down. You make money on that. And you use the money you take in from the put to buy the call. So you've got very little out outlay. Like I've made um, 5,500, 6,000% on Meta, on uh, MicroStrategy, on what else? Clean Spark, I own for nothing. Okay, because of this strategy, I'm selling calls out of the money against my position, that type of stuff. So uh, that's how it works. So you're completely wrong in your assumption here. The key is to not invest much, but maximize the return on the investment. So I can control a massive position in a stock like MicroStrategy, like literally, say, 100 times a $600 value for $900. And I get all the upside. Okay, so that's that's the way you need to think about that. In addition, uh, my margin strategy, I use options to buy stocks cheap. So, for example, if I have, like I've got a whole ton of 190 calls on MicroStrategy, the puts I sold in MicroStrategy are now zero. Okay, and I got all those calls and I could buy me like nearly, a, say, a $600 stock for 190 bucks. As that rotates to an equity, I just have to put half down, like just over 90, 92 bucks or $95 to buy the shares that are worth 600. They're going to 1200 at least this bull run. And that's where you make your margin. So then I convert the options into stock and the stock goes up. So does the amount of margin that I have, which I call my mattress. And I have tons of margins as a result. That's how you grow your bag. <laughs> that's a little margin picture of a big fat mattress. That's where I can sell puts all day long. And even, always remember, don't sell puts unless you really know what you're doing because if the stock goes down, you can get liquidated, wrecked real fast. But when you have big fat um, mattresses, you can sell them all day long. So hope that helps. Next question uh, from Dexter S. I have a ton of microstrategy in my retirement account, but only 85 shares in my trading account. At the current price, should I buy enough shares uh, to get to 100 to hedge when the time comes? Uh, feels like I'm spending dollars to hedge and just making sure it's potentially worth it. Don't worry, I don't plan jumping in front of a moving train. Good idea. So, Dexter, um, you have a lot of shares in your MicroStrategy retirement account, a lot of MicroStrategy shares in your retirement account, but with just 100 shares, you can only hedge your 100 share position, your trading account. You can't hedge what happens in your retirement account, unless you use money to do things like buy puts or set up some type of calendar spread. That's one way you can do it. But getting to 100 shares is advisable because then you can sell calls against it, but only for that 100 share position. You cannot hedge your retirement position with the trading account. But I do advise buying 15 more shares and sell calls on spikes or gamma squeezes. Uh, let's look at one thing that did happen actually on Friday, which is very unusual. This is the MicroStrategy ARB Cloud. And for the first time in as long as I can remember, the price of MicroStrategy spiked above the ARB price. And this is when MicroStrategy, and you can see the top band there is like 623, and we shot above that. And that is because MicroStrategy went up over 40 points on Friday. And I'm not sure why. As I say, sometimes... You know, Wall Street knows something, sniff things out. Maybe BlackRock needs an on-ramp to Bitcoin before they can get all the spot that they need. I'm not sure, but that was crazy action for MicroStrategy, and we haven't seen that. So either Bitcoin price is going to go up or the single mean revert. One or the other is going to happen, and that's guaranteed. Uh, next question is from DIY Dad. Currently, my largest holdings are Casper and XRP. I have internal conflict at the moment with deciding which are the best horses to be on right now. It would be great to get an outside opinion on both of these performers and potentials. So every time I give my honest opinion and show data about things that I wouldn't touch in a million years, people get really upset, but I don't care. Just remember, be in the top 1%. Stay out of the trash, all right? Those two are just, you know. <laughs> and if you're new to my channel, you know what I do. And it's been very successful. So, um, yeah, I I still don't understand. Don't listen to all the pumpers. XRP is, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say. 
It's Christmas Eve. I'm tired. Tired. It's been a long year. Just <laughs> stay out of the trash, everybody. Focus on being on the top 1% of assets. Okay? If you learn anything from me, that's it. Don't be in the 98, 99% of assets. All right? Always be in the creme de la creme. Uh, let me see. From Bricklayer. Could you please explain best practices for wallets and staking? I have recently adapted not connecting my cold wallet to any dApps. Uh, I just sent to my hot wallet, transact and send back. I use my hardware device to protect my wallet that I use for staking, so it gets a bit more complicated. So this is, uh, I'm glad you're thinking like this, especially in light of what happened last week with the Ledger fiasco and their dApps that had an exposure. By the way, I think only... Not that much money was lost in that, and it's all fixed now, so don't freak out too much about it, but it just show you the exposure that you can have of connecting your wallet to dApps, okay? So we'll go through some stuff here, and this is very important for everybody that does self-custody. First of all, rule number one, don't mix cold storage with staking wallets. Use separate wallets for long-term storage, cold wallets, uh, and then this reduces risk as your main holdings remain secure, even if your staking wallet is compromised. Your primary cold wallet should be for your larger holdings and they should not be exposed to the internet. And this minimizes the risk of hacking or phishing attacks. And your staking wallets are at a bigger risk of installing malicious software or interacting with risky dApps. And keeping this separation means your main stash won't be exposed. Second point, keep your seed safe. Give it to nobody. There are literally people that think they're talking to, say, a ledger support or tracer support, and they, they pretend they're at the desk and say, hey, can you give me your seed and I'll help you fix your problem? Don't give it to anybody, even if it's you think it's your mom on the phone. <laughs> Keep your seed safe. Store the seed phrase in a secure offline location, crucial for recovery in case the device fails or it's lost or burnt or whatever. Also consider using a fireproof and waterproof storage solution and bury it in a secure place in your yard or whatever else. Just some ideas and map this up to the ideas we shared at the very beginning of the video too with some ideas there too. Third, verify your staking platform's trustworthiness. Research the staking platform's history, security measures, and overall reputation in the crypto community. There's tons of information about them and you can find out everything and look for platforms that undergo regular audits and have transparent operating model and this ensures that you are entrusting your assets to a reliable platform and reducing the risk of scams technical failures mismanagement of funds there's even a thing called slashing that can happen i haven't heard of a case of it happening yet but it is feasible point number four up way up blah, update your firmware and software regularly keep your wallet's firmware and any associated staking software updated. This ensures you have the latest security patches and improvements. Updates often contain critical security patches and enhancements that protect against newly discovered vulnerabilities. Remember, the whole place is a moving target. You don't want to be stuck with old software that is not fully protected. And this is especially important for dApps because it is such a new space. Badly written smart contracts filled with exploits are everywhere. This is why it's important to verify and regularly keep your systems updated as well. Critical. Next and final point, very critical here. Disconnect when unused. Air gap it. When using dApps for staking, only connect your wallet for the necessary period. Disconnect after completing your transaction to prevent unauthorized access or other vulnerabilities from lingering connections. And this reduces the window of opportunity for hackers to exploit active connections to gain unauthorized access to your wallet. Really simple. So that was a big show. Favorite part of the week as well. Uh, we're helping animals and a shout out to the team that helps make all this possible. This is baby Gordita, rescued a few months old with no mother and a swollen arm from a tick bite. But now learning, growing, and she is finally big enough to be released once again. So we're helping with the final stages of that. And thank you all for making that possible. And then tomorrow is normally DCA day. <laughs> Ivan and CTO are doing Christmas day stuff. I'm 90%, 90% sure they're not going to be able to make it. But I will be here for you guys alone. Share some news and do some live questions as well. So uh, don't forget to tune in. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel too. 
It is live q and I don't have anybody here gathering the questions. So if I missed anything, let me know. I'm going to scroll up through and see if I, if there even was any questions. Maybe there's no questions and we'll just go back to um, <laughs> first live stream. Awesome. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Let me see. Big one from, oh yeah, maybe maybe that's even Cat with a K. Thank you so much as well. And Bitcoin Coffee and everybody else. But if there are no questions, <laughs> Jimmy, yes, baby goodies. So cute. Uh, these little sloths. And uh, it's great that people are there to help them in their time of need. Uh, Yorkshire, UK. James, take Christmas Day off. Yeah, <laughs> there's too much to do, too much to share. And I enjoy doing this greatly. So let's have a killer 2022. Ram power, Clean Spark. Clean Spark just made the top but remember clean has gone from two bucks to over twelve dollars in a very short window of time in fact i think it was sanjay he asked me which miner to buy and he bought it like three bucks uh, only a few weeks ago and then it went on a rampage so timing is everything in this whole space um let me see you still believe bitcoin as an inflation hedge michael burris well <laughs> my bitcoin position has changed quite radically uh, lately uh it is a special asset uh, thank you as well for the likes TND Tesla. I think Bitcoin is special. It's hard. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with the spot ETF and the money flow. Everything that I look at means this thing's going to go bonkers uh, over the next year, year and a half. So we'll see. From Forrest M, uh, will Cyper be a good Bitcoin miner stock to buy? I did. I had a little bit of uh, ETH left. I swapped that into Cypher. I believed. CIFR, not CIPR. Make sure you get the ticker right. I do believe it'll could outperform Ethereum. But what I like about the miners is I can trade them. I can monitor them. I can see when they spike. And it's much easier for me to hedge and collect premium from calls than I can do on Ethereum because it's you don't know what that thing's gonna do. Um let me see. Thank you as well for everybody for being here too. What should I buy with 2K now? <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, I can't tell you what to buy. Uh, GSOL, no, that's a big no. The premium on GSOL is insane. It's like north of the 200, 300%. OSOL is probably going to be nearly 100% premium uh, based on my calculations, depending on how it opens, but still it's less. Um, let me see. Yeah, I do believe Tangent wallets are only for small amounts of money. I wouldn't call them pure cold storage. We don't like them here, and there's better ones. Yes, as TND says, I'm not a fan of Tangent. I have a video, check out, and just search Invest Answers Tangent Wallet. You'll see my video as to why it breaks it down. There's better ones, too. And uh, a lot of people are talking about that ticker, but I'm not going to mention it. Uh, Filecoin, I don't like. I, I like all the new modern stuff. Not the old stuff from four years ago or eight years ago. I like the new technology. Uh, when do we sell Radium? We'll see when it tops out, actually. Let's have a look, because I'm in Radium right now. See if I can pull up a live chart and we can jump in. And uh, let me go to my pink list and see if the thing will pop. Hold on a second. Bear with me. We can... Uh, let me get this ready. And all right, let me see if this will share. Uh, yeah, so here we are with the live comments. Um, all right, Radium, there you are. Okay, so let's go back, say three months, see what's going on. See, it did, it did go up a lot, but remember the whole Solana ecosystem is going up a lot too. We could look at a couple of things, see what the confidence model says, go to the four hour. Is that flashing a red? Yes, it is. So, but it has been flashing because it's been so crazy right now. Let's look at another one. Uh, again, everything's the, pr the problem with this whole space is just moving up so fast. Um, that's Solana over Pith. And it's Solana's far outperformed Pith as well. So, yeah, um, what to do? Uh, it's getting close to the time where maybe we do get rid of Radium as well. Uh, and yeah, I 
I don't like stacks. If you if you value stacks, which is the Bitcoin layer two, uh, based on dollars per user, it's ridiculous. Um, it's very overvalued. So I like things that are more undervalued. Ray flipped Uniswap. Wow, good news. Uh, and and again, as my whole thesis for Solana was best, cheapest, fastest. <laughs> if you have something that's better, cheaper, faster than everything else, everything will go there. That's what I call the black hole that sucks everything in. Uh, thoughts on Link hitting 150? No. Uh, and the Link Marines go after me. I did a Link, should I buy video? It's good. But there's new stuff as well. Um, that's even better. So things need to be really, really fast. And Link is not really fast. Uh, and again, Link is fine. But it's not in the top 1% of assets. I only touch stuff that's in the top 1%. Moon River, don't like. Marinade, yeah, not bad. Um, but yeah, you just watch. Like, it's very simple. Watch the mothership and then watch all this little offspring. They will follow the mothership. It's just simple. Um, uh, HNT or Tia, I'd go with HNT. Uh, from Kevin, not financial advice. None of this is financial advice. And with that, I better go and do some Christmas Eve stuff. I want to thank you all for coming as well. I have no idea what that other protocol is. And I don't like DAOs. <laughs> so, um, real simple. Everybody, there's a lot. Like, there's over 30,000 cryptos now. 99% are complete trash. They're money grabs. Work on finding the top 1% of all assets and you'll do very well. Okay, have a blessed Christmas, everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow for DCA. We'll do a quick one just for those who want to spend half an hour away from the family or if they have that, what is it, when you eat too much turkey, you get sleepy. I rock. Thank you so much for coming as well. And uh, love you all. I'll see you all later. Happy Christmas. See you tomorrow.